IHS, advancing decisions that advance the world. I'm uh, very happy and proud to be able to talk to you about um, our ground penetrating radar technology uh, because we have achieved great breakthrough with our radars uh, by increasing the power of the pulse which goes into the ground by five orders of magnitude, 10,000 times in comparison with most of our competition. And uh, maybe I should say a few words about the ground penetrating radar technology. It's like a radar you have in an airport, for example, it sends a pulse, catches the reflection, calculates the time, register the reflection of the pulse and gets the information of what you have at what distance. Now, since already the 70s and the 80s, uh, people started asking, is it possible to send this pulse into the ground and determine the geological and geophysical structures? Well, it's, it's very tricky because when you operate it in an airport, there's only one reflection from one plane. And when you turn it into the ground, then every grain of sand returns to your reflection. So instead of one clear sound, uh, you have a cacophony of sounds which you need to somehow interpret. This was solved, achieved, and there are several companies operating this technology. And probably the best known is the GSSI. It's an American company fully owned by, owned by a Japanese Oyo Corporation. Uh, and uh, it's called Geophysical Service Systems, Inc. And there are other companies that offer the equipment on the market. Uh, when in the early 80s, the then Soviet Union was preparing a space exploration mission to Mars. And the objective of this mission was to find out, of course, the composition of the Martian ground, and also to find out if there's water, because there's an interesting question, could there be life on the Mars? And uh, for life in biological, in, in uh, proteinic forms to exist, water is necessary. So let's see if there's any water as, as ice, frozen ice, in the Martian ground. But how do you explore the ground? Uh, you cannot drill, you cannot deliver the drilling equipment to Mars. Every gram is precious. So the task there was to use the ground penetrating radar technology, but make it much more powerful, much lighter, and very important, have it consume much less energy. As where do you take energy on the Mars? O only from solar panels. Uh, this required a completely new concept of uh, uh, ground penetrating radar equipment. Instead of sending many, many, many pulses every second, uh, radiating energy into the ground and capturing the reflection, our scientists said we only need to send one pulse, very powerful, in all ranges, ranges of frequency, uh, very short. This way we don't spend a lot of energy. We can make the pulse much more powerful. Of course, it's much difficult to register the reflection and interpret it. So it's required new software, new data processing, new uh, receivers, etc., etc., etc. So it ended up being a completely new technology. We call it a new generation ground penetrating radar. Then obviously the space mi mission to Mars was not realized due to economic chaos in Russia in the 90s. It was canceled. But this technology was, uh, after a few years, developed into a business and fully operational equipment was built, which we are now offering as a service. This is clearly a, a good example of a technology that was developed for a very different purpose at a very different time. Um, do you see it being limited geographically to where it can be deployed, or is, uh, is the sky the limit? No limitation on deployment. It's hand-carried equipment operated by just one person and one local assistant. Yeah. Uh, we can look into the ground as deep as 200 meters. We can even operate uh, through some water. We can operate on wet soil, which typically ground penetrating radar is helpless. Uh, we have done jobs, for example, from the ice from frozen river Neva in Russia, near St. Petersburg. Uh, so we just walked on the ice and for, for a company which was supposed to do horizontal drilling under the river, we were telling them what they have under the river bottom. 
and we were looking through the water. Yeah? So this only our technology can do this. And f of course, for it has applications in construction, archaeology, I mean, all type of geophysics, but other companies can do it too. As for geology, you need to, to look much deeper. We can look up to 200 meters, and our next generation, which we are now testing and doing some trials, will look to 500 meters and more. So we don't have any competitors at such depths. So we try to focus on geological applications. We'll be going soon to Zimbabwe. We've done projects in Kazakhstan. We've done projects in Chile, in Peru, I mean, all over. And uh, Germany, Bulgaria. So this uh, is already known. The Loza brand name is already known, even though it's not a lot of years that we've been doing this. It's very effective for gold, coal, copper, uh, diamonds, the Kimberley uh, structures, and lots of other minerals which you can find lying not very deeply. We can't do anything for oil and gas because you can't find any oil and gas at 200 meters deep, but there are lots of minerals which we can find and track down. If you have a well, we can tell you, map you exactly what is around this well. The data processing takes a couple of hours, can be done every day with the data assembled during the day. Uh, already an operator, an experienced operator, can tell a lot in real time as he sees on the screen of the device, then he already uh, knows in which direction to go and where to, let's say, be more attentive or where to walk faster and skip some areas which are not interesting. But this format of data which is reflected on the screen of the equipment uh, really is only mm, can be understood by an experienced trained operator. Uh, then we take home the files assembled during this mm, let's say mission on the ground and right there on the laptop we run it through our data interpretation software returning uh, nicely looking colored 3D maps or profiles, which can be understood not only by trained geologists and geophysicists, but by anybody. And it's, it's really, I mean, very easy to see on a profile or on a 3D map what you have down there. Uh, another advantage is that we can separate, we can do it right on the spot, or we can separate the data interpretation. If, for example, there is some sensitive geological data that you don't want others to know and even your operator to know, you can use manpower, you can use operator just to carry the equipment and do what they need to do, but they won't understand uh, the, what they see. Uh, so those files can be transmitted to inter by internet to London or to Moscow, wherever the data interpretation center is. And after a couple of hours, return not necessarily to the same area where the GPR is, but maybe to the headquarters of the investment bank, telling them what is there. So even the operator on the ground, the team on the ground doesn't even know what they have. So in some cases, it can be useful. In some other cases, we don't go through it and just tell them on the spot what you've got. Sergey, thanks for uh, sketching some very interesting developments to us, and thank you for coming in. Thank you for your interest. IHS, advancing decisions that advance the world.